purchased a used OMTEC 50 watt CO2, recommended upgrades. I know you guys talked about making them better with some time. Uh, replace all the mirrors right away. Replace your lens ones. right away. Uh, I would go as far as Kyle re probably remembers when my uh, cooling system blew up. Uh, literally just sprung a leak in like eight different places. Mm. Get real silicone tubes. Real good silicone tubes that fit the fittings and real hose clamps that I guarantee you the entire inside of that system. It doesn't matter if it's a $12,000 Eon or a $2,000 ohm tech. All of those silicone tubes are sealed with zip ties. Get hose clamps. We are recording a podcast. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Laser Source Podcast, the number one podcast. If you need your laser engraving questions answered, today we're doing a QA. I've got the whole crew with me Matt, Voice, Jimmy, and Sir Kyle are all here. I've got a box of Oreos. We're ready to go. <laughs> Wait, do you have a Coke? Or, well, I eight Cokes? I'm actually, so I, I drank. Stop the show. Stop I'm the on show. like my eighth Coke today, so I'm, oh, having, uh, I'm having a glass of water. And then I'll, I'll have another Coke afterwards because I've got like a million podcast episodes that I need. Kyle, notice how you're muted already because I'm I don't edit. That. I, mu I muted me. I Good. I muted that Pepsi. <laughs> so how I roll, man. Our sponsor would be displeased. <laughs> Seriously. Um, so, yeah, guys. I'm on their toes, man. So, we're here. Um, oh, big announcement before we start. And I'll say it again at the end because I'm sure a bunch of people are going to filter in. Last Thursday was our last Thursday podcast for the foreseeable future. Just so you guys know, um, Kyle and I had one of our long talks that we always have, you know, when we're snuggling on the couch and watching a movie. <laughs> Who's and, the big um, one? <laughs> what, you know, when, when we have time come for on, that, right? Come on now. Um, and uh, we just, we aren't putting out the, the stuff that we used to put out. We're not making the content that we used to make. And uh, we've gotten too busy with reviews and we're doing too many episodes of the podcast. And I've found that a huge chunk of my time that I'm spending every week is just editing podcasts. I have a backlog of like eight episodes mm -hmm. that haven't gone up on our audio podcast uh, hosts yet. And um, something along the line somewhere has to, has to kind of fall through. I can't, hire anybody until at least the new year uh, we want to we want to bring somebody on to help with like community questions on the lma and discord and facebook and stuff like that uh and it's just not in the budget yet so uh in order to give myself essentially more time with uh premiere <laughs> um we're just gonna we're just gonna nix one of the podcasts uh it's it's nice to do too it's great to spend time with you guys and hang out Kyle's still going to be doing his project live streams uh, that that he does, and you guys love to watch. So uh, you'll still have that as additional live content on a semi-weekly basis, right, Kyle-ish? Yeah. Um, yeah, as often as we can swing it. Be and those are fine because we can just do those, and then they're done, and that's a live stream. And if you don't like long-form content, then you don't need to watch it. Uh, but but the, the podcasts need to be sharper you know it, it requires yeah. a, a a tighter cut so um essentially uh, that's that's the, the long version because I, I can never just make short announcements but uh last thursday's pod podcast was the last thursday podcast uh, again for the foreseeable future we may go back to two a week at some point uh tuesdays have always been the more important ones are usually the ones where we have our guests uh, yeah. There may be one or two going into the future if we had already scheduled a guest for a Thursday. I know there might be one or two of those boys. Um, those will still pop up and you guys will hear about them well in advance. Uh, but uh, otherwise, we'll be seeing you here from now on on Tuesdays at 9 or 9.30 p.m. Mm -hmm. EST. So uh, that's kind of my announcement. And again, we're, we're just doing this to hopefully kind of get back to our roots a little bit and kind of start, you know, going back to the more educational kind of informative content that they were publishing before. And in order to do that, we need to crank yeah. through our backlog. I, 
there's we have episodes of laser yeah. that have just been sitting there for a long time we've got uh i've still got like two reviews i need to finish kyle's still got like two reviews he needs to finish we've got a huge list of things we still want to put out for the gantry crash course i've got things that we need to do for the lightburn for galvo crash course including update videos because lightburn's gotten like 50 updates since the last time i've published an episode on that which means a lot of stuff we're actually gonna have to tread back and redo otherwise the cards aren't going to stack right when we're when we get into uh, some of the more intermediate stuff so um it's a big list there's a lot to do and uh the the thursday podcast are the least important of those so uh that's what i've got um also miranda's just throwing this out there uh she is just the baby carrier uh kyle's alex's true love (laughs) <laughs> um, totally fair. Uh, you're not going to hear anything from me on that. I mean, um, just truth, straight truth. Yep, straight truth, straight truth. Uh, Jack says, anyone need a 30 watt Rakus? I need to upgrade to a Mopa. You can always grab the source, man. Swap that source. Keep Head it as a backup. backup. Leave it on the shelf. Yep, yep. backup source uh, in case something goes bad. Don't forget to uh, check your your power supply requirements on on that swap too. Hmm. Mm. That might be you almost certainly need to replace your power supply. Yeah, you either yeah. you probably need to go at least higher wattage, but you're pro you're probably switching voltage too. You're probably going from a twenty four to a forty eight. Mm-hmm. We have a video on how to do that. Um, uh, not we have one on checking one? power supplies. We have one on checking power supplies, but not swapping them. I mean, we I remove a power supply in the EasyCAD three downgrade video. I guess mm-hmm. we're. Yes, we do have a video on that. Go watch the EasyCAD 3 downgrade video. We're just swapping power supplies because of the board change rather than because of a source change. Right. But, we do, yeah. but we do swap power supplies. Um, also, because we're doing a Q&A today, uh, I just want to say hi to everybody in chat because we don't have a guest, so I don't have to ignore you all. Uh, Vince Nobucks, SD, Andrew F. What's up, guys? Good to see you. You guys are here nice and early. Anthony's here in the chat. Uh, we've got my wife as always. Jack in the shop is here hanging out. Uh, love is here. I was first last Thursday. Does that count for anything? Uh, yeah, you just got to claim it, man. You got to claim it and you get your, your trophy in the mail. Uh, they ship in a couple weeks. We've <laughs> also got, let's see. Um, oh, uh, uh, what was her first name now? Good. Craig Law, the lawyer. Somebody. The lawyer lady. Dang it. What is her name? Shoot. Brenda. Is it Brent? No, something. Uh, yeah, yeah. I can't I'm remember. Horrible with it. I'm horrible. We're I'm assholes. Uh, hi, Mrs. Craig. <laughs> <laughs> Hope law is going well. Uh, Don, what's up, Don? How you doing? Jacob is here, and who else do we got in the chat today? Ooh, uh, Gretch Zeppelin hanging out with us again. And I think it's Barbara. Barbara. I was, Barbara. I was close. I said Brenda. It's Barbara. It um, and uh, John Uftering is here too. Uh, so that's it, guys. So um, we're more or less caught up. If I missed you there, sorry. Uh, Jacob Swinney's asking, what's the difference? Mopa, Rakus. Rakus is a brand name. Uh, Mopa is a type of fiber laser. Uh, Rakus doesn't typically make Mopa lasers. There's two kinds of lasers. There's Q-switched and there is a Mopa. Q-switched lasers give you control over speed, power, and frequency, but not Q-Pulse. And uh, mobile lasers give you an additional control over the Q-Pulse. It's a long story, uh, and we have a great explanation of it on the video titled Everything You Need to Know About Galvo Lasers on the channel. Uh, So go check that one out. We'll give you a full explanation. But essentially, mobile lasers give you finer control over the amount of energy that you're distributing Mm -hmm. onto your material. And the other one, you have, your mind. you have a good explanation of that, too, on the one about all the colors. You explain the Q-Pulse, the, the band. You explain all that there, how it, why it makes color by producing more heat and all that well, stuff. Well, another yeah. one, too, is the 2021, like, what laser should I buy in 2021? Mm, like, you literally go there. through all the different uh, power sources, and then what do they do? You talk about yep. the different ranges of uh, yep. frequency. So, yeah. like, Boys, three or four good videos. To- are you referring to our guest episode on Wired? No, no, no. The one where you you guys had a video where someone took a piece of metal plate and just made a bunch of squares of a bunch of different colors. Did you do that, Kyle, on a live stream? Mm. I might have. I don't. Mm. I don't remember. <laughs> I don't know, We've done. Um, can I blow your mind though? Yep. 
Apparently, apparently Rakus is also doing Mopa sources now. I mean, I know that they make them, but I don't. They don't appear. They're not popular. In, like, uh, machines. They're, like, they're not. not like, yeah, they're not yeah. out there for the most part, but they're out yeah. there. Yeah. Um, the RFL uh, something or other MX series, something or other. Yep. But yeah. There you go. They, you just don't come across them very often. Wiper for Galvo. Interesting. Yep. There you go. Oh, there you go. Okay. I don't even know what episode that is. Episode five. Find, go on YouTube, search the channel. It'll come up. I just don't know because it's bothering me. <laughs> By the way, while you're looking, here's another question. It's, uh, Galvo graphics tools. Uh, if you're counting from the very be- uh yeah, I guess. Maybe we go over it in that. Hmm. Is there a free download for EasyCAD 3 if I need to buy it? What's the basic price? Well, you can't just like upgrade to EasyCAD 3 if you have an EasyCAD 2 board. So it really comes down to what controller you're using. If you have an EasyCAD 3 card already, you can download EasyCAD 3 anywhere, but it needs to be activated online. They have an online activation system uh, and you can only you need a obtain, dongle. Yeah, you need a dongle and you can only obtain the dongle and activation key by purchasing a new board. Uh, so you're you're essentially looking at a fifteen hundred dollar upgrade. If you're on EasyCAD two, you can upgrade to Lightburn for like a hundred and sixty bucks or whatever it is now, uh, which is the far better option. I, we usually it's the cost of the board, yeah. We usually instruct people on how to downgrade from EasyCAD three to EasyCAD two so that they can start using Lightburn. Uh, so we're we're usually going the other way, uh, unless you have a very specific reason you want EasyCAD three. I would I would swerve on that uh if i were you yeah and if you're gonna make the investment if you already if you think you have an easy cat 3 controller and you for whatever reason can't find your dongle or something you can contact your supplier for your laser and see if they can get your replacement dongle and a replacement license set Mm -hmm. but you're going to be paying as much as a replacement board anyway just about you're you're probably going to be paying like a thousand or twelve hundred bucks Oh yeah, it's gonna be so, more than that. Yeah. I mean, that hurts. yeah, just go with Lightburn. It's easier to use. Trust oh, me. Yeah. It's, it's easier to use. Just start the Lightburn for Galvo Crash Course. It's one of the top playlists on the channel. Just go to the channel, click playlist. It's right up there. Boom, installation. We'll get you installed. Uh, everything works, and it's uh, it's uh, homegrown software, and it's it's very polished. So uh, that that would be the way to go. Yeah, I in chat. Good. Yeah in chat i'll do i'll do it the easy way for you i just dropped a link to the playlist if you're listening to the playlist and in in you know not live just go to the playlist section there's the next question loaded up for you yep can you explain about frequency on the jpt where you may want a number like 20 versus 250 um so the smaller the number the less pulses you're doing and there's it's it's kind of a weird bell curve but in general the lower that number the the more energy is going to be distributed per pulse you're hitting less often but you're hitting harder uh the higher the number the faster you're pulsing so you're, you're doing more pulses but even <coughs> the pulses is gentler uh so lower frequencies are typically better for ablating material uh like where you want to remove material from something if you're trying to do a deep engraving on aluminum uh a lower frequency is typically going to be better for that and again, we're generalizing here. There are exceptions to all of this. It's far more complicated. Uh, higher frequencies are better for when you're trying to do like oxidizing or annealing of surfaces where we just want to heat the metal or we're trying to remove a very thin plating, but we don't necessarily want to like ablate. Um, so that's that's kind of what you'd be looking at yeah. as the difference between those two settings. There are very few instances, at least in my personal everyday use, uh, of these machines where I go over 400 kilohertz. Um, so the the JPTM sevens have a range of like one to 4,000. I've never used a frequency in a serious capacity at like 3,000 or 4,000 kilohertz. I've just not done it. Um, after a while, you kind of stop noticing the difference, I think. Um, and the, the millijoule output is just too low at those frequencies to notice much effect on the material that you're trying to mark. So um, you really need something super soft. 
what's at, important at yeah what's important is that you're getting the hundred plus right we, we're just really kind of looking for like the hundred plus uh you know 150 to 200 is a really nice range uh so you'll find that in most jpt sources you'll find that in a good chunk of the new max sources and a handful of the rakus sources uh rakuses are really great for ablating they have usually ranges from like 30 to 60 or 50 to 80 or you know 70 to 100 that's kind of like where you'll you'll find rakuses fall uh the jpt and the newer max sources are usually between like 20 and 200 250 300 400 so uh you get a little bit of that that higher range and then when you get into the mopas the you know the the frequency capabilities get needlessly needlessly ridiculous yeah there was a follow-up question about the uh the ablating material and the depth i think jack in the shop asked kyle how deep so deep (laughs) right um i know i do but the thing is like that's really that alex is spot on like always um if you're someone who's trying to because i I, the, the real follow up question by the way is down here so for plastics what frequency to engrave and that's where the higher frequency is usually where you're going to find a lot of play yep. because like alex said yeah. the more power the more power hits with that lower frequency and it just melts it or bubbles it warps it if if you guys want to learn about this like really learn about this one of the things that i highly recommend you watch first of all is lasered uh where kyle and i that's engrave really- like phones and headphones and and shit like that uh it's it's framed as more of like a general audience kind of show and it's funny and we're like melting things and we're like oh my god it's on fire but if you pay attention uh we include all of the settings as we're working through things and you can see the kind of changes that we make and on top of that if you're a member over at the laser master academy and you support the channel we have the laser director's cuts which we strip out all the music we strip out all of the you know frills and fireworks we're not burning and melting phones to you know ash it's just kyle and i straight up sitting in the shop all of our conversations included where we're talking about why we're making the decisions we're making as we're trying to find good marks on these plastics and polymers and it's really really good information and i feel like people don't really watch it because they see lasered and they think it's like just kind of like this goofy we're playing around with lasers for fun but part the whole first half of each of those episodes is kyle and i looking for good settings and functional we have we have the entire unedited uncut version of that where you can hear our debates back and forth as we're trying to decide on what to do recorded for you in the director's cuts on the LMA. It's a great perk of the LMA and the director's cuts. There's a lot of really powerful information in there, especially if you're someone that's, you know, looking to work with plastics or electronics. Uh, that's, that's a great, great, great and resource for that information. One addition to that too, is a lot of times people ask what's the right laser, or if I have this laser, what can I do? And laser does a really good job of hitting all the different lasers to show you exactly what they do and mm-hmm. what they don't yep. do. Because right. like, and what's really cool, and this is you're exactly right. It was like Mr. Wizard, dude. That's why I loved it, is because there was some humor, but honestly, you're learning shit. And the cool part was, I did not expect the fiber to do as well as it did mm-hmm. on one of the materials. I'll let you guys go find out. But like, I literally was like, holy shit, the UV is going to nail this. That's a no brainer. And it actually was the fiber to be the right tool. And I was yeah. like, God damn it. Yeah. In fact, I think what you're specifically yeah. referencing to, we actually used a lower frequency on the final mark. I don't yeah. think that, yeah, that's which, yeah. which, Makes no sense. I I can sit here and talk to you guys until I'm blue in the face about what frequency to use when and how. And it's just at the end of the day, it's nonsense. Uh, It's material science. It's over every single one of our heads. And uh, the the best way to do it is via experimentation. And Kyle and I deal with a lot of that for you in those episodes, both the the edited for fun episodes and the director's cuts on the LMA. I think there's a lot to learn from both of them. Um, so I would, I would definitely check those out. Uh, we do have a link to lasered in the website. You can go to lasereverything.net. It's in the shows tab at the top of the page. Uh, or we have again, a playlist for it on the channel. And then the director's cuts are available in their own course package, 
uh, for free for the LMA members over at masters.lasereverything.net. So uh, you can get all that stuff is very, we make it very easy to, easy to, to find there. One quick, uh, one quick safety addendum before you move on to the next question too, is um, if you're going to be throwing plastics under any laser, mm -hmm. make sure you know what type of plastic it is, what's in it. Yeah, Maybe like look it. up an MSDS sheet if you can, because mm -hmm. it's really easy to just say, oh, this is, you know, hard plastic. This isn't vinyl. It's it's hard. But there's there are hard plastics that include PVC or vinyl. And you could very easily yeah. get chlorine poisoning in your lungs and I mean, fuck yourself up. ABS um, too, uh, like hydrogen yeah. cyanide, I think it is from from yep. ABS. So uh msds for everything guys you can find them they're out there they're super easy to read it's written in plain english look for the section that says what happens with this shit when i set it on fire there's literally a, a section that says like when this burns this is what happens and a lot of them and that's what nothing. a laser does yeah like acrylic <laughs> uh you look at acrylic and it literally will say like you know disgusting smelling vapors non-toxic and then like gives a list of the things that, that are included and then it says you know vinyl and it says freaking chlorine gas which will eat you and your machine so it's right it's, in the name polyvinyl chloride chloride right so um be really careful with that but uh, and we cover that on laser tube we talk about that so um yeah. there's you know again it's a it's a great resource i highly recommend it I need to go back and take time to just listen to more of that stuff too, honestly. Um, but yeah, he's, this person, the SD said, didn't I read Lightburn has a beta 2.5 3D setting? <clears throat> I don't know about that. Uh, Not that I'm aware of. As far as I the, know, it, the 3D height map engraving, maybe what they're they, referring to. They have to. 3D height map engraving, which uses a grayscale 3D height map. So, Which is very functional. It works very it, well. Oh, yeah. that That's been working for, I mean, since before it was publicly released like yeah post 1.0 yeah yeah this is like yeah, that worked great eight months ago it's been working One but many episodes i need to do for the light burn for galvo crash course is that 3d yeah. height map thing um and I, you need to do an episode on how to generate those because i know you've got a really sick way to do it which we still have not sat down and talked about kyle but that would be a good mini episode for the channel too yeah. maybe like right before we'll plan it so right before yeah, that yeah we'll uh we'll 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 Tic Tac it, right? I think that's what they call yeah, it. Yeah, Tic Tac it. Um, <laughs> the, uh, the other thing, um, so the the reason why 2.5D and 3D, well, not so much 3D. 3D is a completely different conversation. But 2.5D, where normally you could sort of do that with EasyCAD 2 uh, controllers, because you can control the, the Z-axis, not so much the dynamic Galvo, but the Z-axis. Um, the reason why that's not a thing right now is because Lightburn hasn't incorporated Z-axis control in software. So if you have a, a, a motorized Z-axis that's not manually controlled, you don't have push buttons, it's controlled through the control board, they didn't incorporate or work out that portion of the software yet, at least as far as I know. I haven't seen any release notes on it, so I don't think they've incorporated it. Yeah. Um, I know that they're working at some point into it. They've said that they want to incorporate Z-axis control and the stereotypical stuff that you would use EasyCAD 2 for, XY tables, et cetera, et cetera. There are a lot of things they want to add. But the reality is when you're a software developer and you have a laundry list of stuff, you ultimately want to incorporate the stuff that more people use at a time. And the harsh reality is those are things that the vast majority of people don't have on their lasers. Those are kind of niche areas as popular as they might be. Yeah. It's kind of like the McLarens of the world where there's only a couple dozen people in a given area that probably own that car, even though we all like to drill over them. Right. So we're not going to make changes. We're not going to make changes to the freeway to better those, their driving experience. It's yeah. Just, so you know, that that's the situation on that. Uh, now, did that change in the last 24 hours? It might have. I haven't checked the release notes since Friday. So yeah. maybe there's a surprise. Unlikely. Unlikely. But I don't I don't think that they released that. Maybe they did. Um, 38 people watching right now, by the way. Uh, and also a quick shout out to Carlos. Hello, all just joined LMA a couple of days ago. Thanks for all, all right. the you share. Waiting for my 50-watt JPT in the coming days, starting from zero. 
Uh, congratulations on the That's new exciting. season. Can't wait to see That's where we all it. start from, man. Yeah. We and all we, start uh, from zero, right? We're glad that you uh, you chose to hang out with us uh, while you're getting started. I, I think that you'll find Laser Everything to be a valuable resource and hopefully you make some good friends here uh, as well. Uh, Chad also came in with this question. Can amp setting on the controller not matching servo on rotary cause zeroing issues? Uh, I.e. controller set at 1.91 peak and servo saying four amps. I'm assuming you mean a stepper because it would be very odd to have a servo on a rotary. Uh, but yes, uh, if you're under or over driving your stepper motor uh, via the controller, the stepper driver, uh, you can certainly be missing steps. You'll be either skipping steps or just not pushing steps through. So you're either yeah. pushing so much energy through that you're jumping over a step to the next one and it thinks that it's only taken one or you're not pushing enough power through and it will try to push through a step and then it just won't. Uh, you really want those to match. So um, a lot of people get confused because on stepper drivers, you've got your first four switches are for setting your amperage and then the fourth is the half switch typically. So they'll say, well, I can't get my amperage by setting the first three switches. You have to actually use the half switch and then you can half whatever it's set to. So if your uh, stepper motor is calling for four amps and you can set the configuration of the first three switches to be eight amps, then you hit the half switch and then it'll output four. Um, so yep. you sometimes you have to do a little bit of weird math in order to, um, to kind of pull that off, but you do want them to match. You want to be uh, driving as much as closely as possible to the spec on the stepper motors. I don't think they've ever been exact. I've never, I don't think I've ever usually had an exact within like a 5% or 10% margin. You can usually get it close-ish, right? Yeah, yeah. You ideally don't want to, if you're going to be closer by going under by a little bit versus mm -hmm. going over it by a full amp, you might want to try under driving at first. And if you're finding you're getting inconsistencies, then bump it up to the next closest option. Yeah. But like Alex said, usually you can get it very close with the first couple of switches, even if you have to double it and then cut it in half with that fourth switch. Overdriving or it. Sometimes yeah, you can. Overdriving yeah. it is better than underdriving it. I would say most of the time, but you want to watch your heat. Uh, if it's too hot that you can't touch it, it's too hot. Like, so. Uh, and you'll burn your motor out. That's how you burn your motor out. So uh, just keep keep an eye on the, the temperature. If you have yeah. to put an extra, you know, 0. 0.2 amps through in order to get it close, it should be fine and it shouldn't be overheating. But that's something that you're going to want to, uh, you know, definitely look at. It sounds like there's definitely something misset there uh, one way or another. Uh, check your steps, too, since we're on Hi, that Reds. conversation. Hi, Reds. Uh, Mason Widmer says, I appreciate all the work you do for a relatively small community. I've been busy or I've been using my fiber for a week now and can't imagine how frustrating this learning curve would be without all of the content yet. Yeah, uh, definitely. Nice. That's, definitely. uh, that's our goal. We want to, we want to make it, you know, easier for everyone. Right. Yep. Yep. I like how uh, you and Jimmy right now, like the, I'm going to take a screenshot. <laughs> you guys look like you're like riding a bus together. <laughs> Old and older. Dude, like the, uh... yeah, exactly. What other helmet do you have on? <laughs> <laughs> what the that fuck? That was good. That was good. I'm going to say that for it literally, time. it literally looked like the, like the thinking pose, like that famous, you know, like both of them had it going. <laughs> Uh, Farva says, I think we will see more hatch settings on Lightburn. That would be cool. Um, yeah, I mean, that, that would be nice. Uh, some different patterns or, uh, I mean, different optimization options. Yeah, that would be cool. Yep. And uh, Chad writes back, uh, thank you, and I will try that. Max on my controller is a 4.2 peak. So, yeah, just make absolutely uh -huh. sure that that stepper driver takes four amps. That's a beefy stepper driver. Uh -huh. At four amps, but just just that thing must concerned. be like a a, a NEMA thirty four monster. I, know. I was gonna say that's for like What's turning longer? like multiple dog bowls at once. It's just like stacks of eight of them. Yeah, uh, so yeah. just as long as you're sure, man. Uh, before you 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 know, I, I'd hate for you to burn yeah. out your motor, but just make sure. And then yeah, you burn you out your motor, kid. To, you're you want you're gonna release the the <laughs> Christmas yeah, movie. The, the magic cloud of electronics dust stinks. <laughs> 
Can a 100 watt JPT fiber cut through gold for jewelry making fairly quickly, aka just a few passes? I, I'm going to say unlikely. Um, and how it, thick? I, yeah. Is it gold foil? Right. <laughs> um, um, if we're talking about a realistic, you know, like point point eight or one or one point five or two, it can cut through it. It's just not going to do it. It'll do it quicker than a 60 watt or a 30 watt for sure. Yeah. 30 but you have about, to fine tune the settings and it is still going to take a little time. Just to give you a frame of reference, the 30 watt took about two hours to do 0.8 oh. on gold. Um, and that was with a, those were with the, you know, uh, the, the worst settings. I think by the time we had finished recording our gold series on the channel and you can watch that, there's a, there's an episode called gold cutting secrets think i got it down to 40 minutes um with like the good stuff i'm you know pulling this out of my butt right now i don't remember off the top of my head but i i, I think that's fairly close which would mean at 60 watts you're probably gonna do like 20 and then at 100 you might be able to do like 10 but it's certainly not going to be like zip yeah. zip zip you know like it's cutting, not cutting plywood it's not like a entry co2 yeah, a plasma. It's not of. like a one to one situation where two where like if it took X amount of time on a 30 watt, it's going to take a, you know, a third of the amount of time. It's not quite that exact. Yeah, it's going to be, you know, it's not that efficient is what I'm saying. When, when you're talking about heat energy and ablation, it, it's it's never, you know, Linear. a perfect line. Right. Yeah. One to one. But um, so it will probably take proportionately a little more time than a one to one on the on the wattage but yep. it'll be faster just if how you, much faster we don't know if you want to cut a lot get a cutter um fiber laser cutters exist you can get gantry versions of them that uh you know and a lot of people think immediately of the the kilowatt lasers you know like the 1.5 kilowatt fiber cutters i'm not talking about that i'm talking about like like 100 watt rakus powered like fiber laser gantry systems that's something you can buy ohm tech has them on amazon you can buy that yeah uh, and that will do a better job because the beam is coming down at a 90 degree angle and you're not having to scan around at like a weird angle or anything like that if you can find a machine like that in a configuration set up to better cut because galvas really aren't designed for cutting at all you you could probably have some success with that. I really want one of those. I think um, I think I, I might it. get one next year at some point. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that one coming. Yeah. Um, another thing I'll add to that too, and I completely agree. Um, a lot of those smaller systems, even though they're smaller, a lot of them also incorporate a gas assist, so you can speed along the process with with pressurized cooling gas, right? Um, whether it's if you're not oxygen, doing carbon dioxide. Yeah, which you're not doing on a Galvo. You can you can throw an air assist at a Galvo, but it's not gonna it's not the same thing. Um, you're with with an actual cutter, you're incorporating pressurized gas to to help punch through that hole better and give you a cleaner cut. It's gonna be more efficient, it's gonna be faster. Um, and you can even get them in relatively small sizes. I think the smallest one I've seen um, is anywhere from like a 100 to 500 watt in a like a 200 by 400 form factor or something like that and i'm talking millimeters so you could you know perfect for a small sheet of gold or silver right um so if you're looking to do a lot of custom jewelry maybe consider yeah. that yeah and uh, learn a side cut gary says hello all joined a bit late just wanted to wish everybody a merry christmas uh may god bless everyone's families thank you gary i hope you have a merry thank christmas you, gary. Too, dude um we also have, uh, let me see, um, ba, 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 Chad, just touch and base again. It's like a saga. Uh, he provides the stepper model and then says it's 1.8 degrees for amp, which sounds right to me. So, um, and if the steps were correct when checked, then I would just say, yeah, you're probably under driving the stepper motor. So, um, bump it up, baby. Let's, let's cook something. Mm -hmm. Uh, 57 HS 22A, I think, is one of those hybrid servos. Hmm. If I Fancy remember, boy. maybe Fancy it's boy. not. Maybe it's just a big. I was say, if it is, can the thing just go into town? Holy cow. 
So if you're gonna cut like someone's like if you want to start cutting like gold name customized necklaces, you're mm-hmm. saying fiber cutter, no. fiber cutting machine. Yeah. But the, what's what's the price range on that type of stuff if people were curious? Six grand, maybe. It depends on the source, as always, right? Hundred watt JPT is gonna be a lot more than that. Uh, but I think that I saw them starting out from Cloud Ray. You can't find or not Cloud Ray, uh Ohm Tech. You cannot find them on their website, but they sell them on Amazon. Uh, they're big gray ohm tech machines, just like you would expect them to look like. But they have a fiber source inside, and they use fiber reflective mirror and lens focusing systems, um, which isn't – it's not new. It's not a new idea. I mean, like Epilogue has been doing this forever with their Fusion series, where they have a fiber source and a CO2 source in one machine – um, so it's not, again, it's not new tech by any means, but they, uh, they make them, uh, if you want to cut with it, you know, the, the, the big thing with the gantry, if you get like, if you, if you pick it up with a 30 watt rachis is that you can mark stuff much larger in one shot than you can do with the Galvo, right? It's slower, but you can mark much larger with something like that. Whereas, you know, if you, if you're trying to cut, you could put a hundred watt uh you know jpt or 150 watt jpt m7 in there and really start putting some some jewels down on your on your material to to get that cut through and then the the air assist benefit that kyle mentioned is you know massive so the price is going to range it depends on the source that you want to put in it um is is really kind of what that's going to come down to but i would say anywhere from like five to fifteen thousand dollars uh for for cutting spec right because yeah. you, you'd want you'd want at least at the very least if you're very patient 60 watts uh you know but 100 would be better 150 so, 200 question would be for that. best yeah the higher How the, much, large, the quicker you can cut through without heat soaking too no so my question for people to consider that you guys probably know the answer to better than definitely me um you got to use nitrogen or you got to use oxygen how much does that eat up like should people be looking at small tanks big tanks like big tanks always big tanks, big tanks. Big so yeah you're, like, you're probably looking like at kind, an 80 or 100 pounder minimum like the the size of the helium tanks that they use at party city to fill the balloons yeah. like big big tanks and so, you, yeah I, at least with the with the kilowatt lasers which operate at much higher oh, pressures because sure. i haven't used a, a like normal sized fiber cutter before this is theoretical territory for me at the moment uh but with the kilowatt lasers you can dump a tank of nitrogen in like five minutes of cutting um fuck that's expensive they they cut very quickly but they're kilowatt lasers you're not cutting quickly with the uh with the gantry one and because you're not cutting through it in one shot like literally the way the kilowatt lasers will work is they'll sit there and just pierce straight through the material first and then begin their cut run that way the laser is hitting the entire side of that oh, cut edge sideways and yeah. pushing it sideways yeah you're if you get a fiber gantry machine it's not going to work that way you know in like the one to 200 300 watt range it's not going to work that way you're going to be going layer by layer by layer so i would make the argument that nitrogen and oxygen support is less a requirement and more of a nicety i think you can just push air through that you know like a nitrogen base air like just breathing air through that and that would be fine for most cases but i'm you know co2 yeah even, we're just maybe, we're just, just like for cooling shooting the dark there yeah well, the other just, thing too is for cleaner edges less burring and that kind of stuff where like they need the biggest problem with this with this cutting setup is that you are going to create temperatures because you're not cutting all the way through the metal you're going to create temperatures that are going to slag and re-weld the metal together so if you don't have an air assist that's going to be a big problem if you have an air assist you can push that kind of molten material out of the way while you're making a cut pass so that the next time you come around you're not remelting that slag and re-welding the metal together uh, obviously pressurized nitrogen would be best for that, that task. But I think if you can push enough PSI through the system, air would be fine. Um, which is much cheaper. <laughs> compressed air is much yeah. cheaper than uh, compressed nitrogen. So just get Jimmy to blow on the hose really hard. Yeah. But again, <laughs> I, I haven't, I haven't owned one of these machines. I haven't tested any of this. So we're just, we're just yeah. 
Bullshit. But that's, that's, right that's stuff though that people yeah. don't think about and consider because like my brother bought a metal cutting, you know, thirty six fifty five. But then that was right when COVID hit and oxygen tanks went through the roof and the scarcity was at, like there were none. So he basically yeah. bought like a you know twenty thousand dollar paperweight and it was like, well, there goes that because nitrogen couldn't get it because doctors and like you literally went the bottom of the list of people who could get one. Yeah. But you know, now that things are a little better, it's but it's still just something to consider and know if you're gonna go that route. So Yeah, yeah. make sure you and also yeah, and also the, not the source, but then if you're in a uh, like a registered license space, some like you know you're you're renting a place, a lease, uh, be really careful too because now you have compressed gases next to you know combusting machines, and that's a whole another insurance and thing to just think about. So yeah. just from the business side, because uh, yeah. every state's got different, and then every town has different rules about that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um. Anyways, but going to the next, I think. think it, I think this kind of ties in if Kyle probably for you, buddy. So, um, 60 watt cutting on a jewelry, like how it, it really depends on what you're doing. Jewelry is an enormous category, right? You're talking anything from stainless to titanium, to silver, to gold, to, uh, plated metals, you know, silver plated, gold plated, you know, mm-hmm. there there's so much variety there. Are you doing rings? Are are you cutting blanks for rings and forming them yourself? Are you? Uh, we need a little bit more uh, info if you're looking for like feedback on what you're trying to accomplish. And the how is, watt is yeah, depending on what you're doing and the thickness of the material, a sixty watt is fine for cutting. A fifty watt might even be fine depending on your thickness and what material you're working with. Um, but it's a time trade off. If you, if you're limited on time and you, you're working with a hard material to cut, is, is it worth doubling or tripling your machine cost to make it more efficient? So, and just um, sitting your ass there for, yeah, I mean, I, I'm talking like time. Like if you're, if you're trying to cut two millimeter thick gold on a 60 watt, you're going to be there a while. Even if you optimize your settings, it's not going to be fast. Um, so, yeah. Uh, if you want um, a little bit more of a fine tuned answer, give us an idea of what you're trying to do. Um, William says, "I just replaced my 80 watt tube on my OM Tech, and when firing the tune for the first time or tube for the first time, is leaving a half moon mark at 10 percent power. Is this normal, or is the tube defective?" Uh, that's a solid, it depends. Um, did you go through a full alignment series on your gantry and your tube after you replaced it? Because as soon as you pulled your old tube out and put your new tube in, everything's got to be realigned. Yep. So for example, if you're getting a half moon, like you're, you're getting like a D shape out of it or even slightly smaller than a D shape and it's cutting off sooner, uh, you could be catching the edge of your nozzle uh, or even one of the edges of your mirrors, or you might even have a dirty mirror for all I know. Um, and it's it's blocking part of the beam from coming out of the nozzle, potentially. I'm glad that it we could also be the tube. But talked about this question because I've been eyeing it for a hot minute. And I, <laughs> it did nozzle. That's like so a nozzle issue, uh, yeah. which means your, your beam isn't hitting the third mirror straight. So when it's coming down, it's not bouncing down straight through the nozzle hole. It's like clipping the edge and so what you're seeing is the clip of the beam around the edge that could be it could be not hitting that third mirror straight because of any of the mirrors in the line so you need to do a realignment of your entire mirror system and make sure that everything is uh you know level and and bouncing the correct way uh it's fairly easy i don't think we have a video on mirror alignment yet um Um, which is a huge problem but no i thought maybe you did it on a live stream Mm, maybe, but it was you like because I I remember ago. you doing six hour live the, the tube circle thing. Yeah, it was exactly. It was on the six hour live stream. Yep. Yeah, like it was, I'm not, I remember. Yeah, I wouldn't. I, we don't have a good episode on it. <laughs> we don't have a good one. We'll, we'll get there. <laughs> yeah, gantry crash but course it, maybe at some point. Um, but yeah, so I, I'm with Alex. I would 
say if it's a brand new tube, that's where I would be looking first. I wouldn't be jumping to the tube being defective. If you've gone through everything, and the other thing you can do is you can put a like a sticky note or a piece of tape on one of the brackets to your mirrors, and you can even pulse it and see what the shape is coming out of the tube, mm-hmm. bef- you know, before or after each of the um, the mirror mounts. Yeah, so you can validate the shape of of your your beam coming too. So you can almost fine tune where the yeah, issue you're is. Like, you're you like, get oh, to mirror it, one's a circle, a mirror two's a circle, mirror three is a moon, right? Or or one, two, and three are all circles. You put a piece of tape under the nozzle, literally press it up underneath the nozzle and hit the mark button. And you can see, you'll see an outer circle and an inner circle. And if that inner circle is clipped, that's where your half moon shape is coming from. We, we do need yep. to do that. We need to put that. That needs to go high up on the list for 2023, uh, like just a mirror alignment video. We'll blue say, I, it. Yeah, I've done that on mine a couple of times now because we've had to not not replace a, a, a tube or anything, but we've had to. They just need to. I mean, they just come loose. It's a big rocking piece of steel, right? Like they just get loose over time well, and they need to be adjusted. And the other thing, too. Saying, I, oh, sorry. Go oh, ahead. he's saying it's a half moon shape coming right out oh, of the tube. So if that's the case. Some tubes do have, there's like this um, protective metal ring that can oh, sometimes yeah. have a glass lens on it. Mm. Or um, it's kind of like a beam <laughs> combiner lens, but not. Um, sometimes those are just protective and you're supposed to take them out sometimes. Other times they recommend you leave them in. Um, make sure that that's not, A, doesn't have anything in it. There's not something like blocking it. And B, make sure it's clean. Yeah. Um, um, and one thing that people I know in other live streams have talked about too is when you initially put the laser tube in, you have to level it. I mean, maybe you guys mentioned that while I was gone for a second, but like that, like uh, it looks level because they put it right back where the old one was, but the fittings have just like a slight millimeter, two millimeter difference, and that's enough to to mess up the whole thing. Yeah, and glass yeah. has imperfections too, right? It's yeah. they're, they're glass. Glass is not perfect, even when it's you know made in a factory. So uh, every tube is going to be different. And when you are leveling your tube, make sure you're leveling it to the gantry, not to the floor. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's level to the floor. Go to your your gantry rail, your x-axis gantry rail. Slap a level on that, and make sure that that whatever that reads, it'd be nice if you you know, leveled your machine to the floor with the feet, but a lot of people don't do that. So make sure whatever reading you're getting on your X axis gantry rail matches the reading you're getting on the tube. Those two things need to be equal. Um, Just like when you're doing a Galvo head on, you know, we don't level the Galvo scan heads to the floor. We level them to our work bed. So that's going to be really important in both of those instances. Uh, But yeah, I I, I don't want to, I don't want to like, confuse you out of thinking that there may or may not be an issue with it uh because there might be you know um i don't i don't know what brand it is but or what brand your machine is uh tube or machine but i would probably reach out to your laser Wire. manufacturer and just be like is this normal you know because this is yeah this is concerning and the last thing i wanted to mention before we moved on um i would also just and i know this seems like a stupid like is it plugged in kind of a suggestion but uh a lot of the mid-tier lasers will have like the steel goal posts that you Mm. like kind of aim through in order to just make sure you're not clipping that um it's a stupid thing but a lot of people will put tape on the first mirror and then they'll shoot through the goal post and they're actually clipping the the goal posts so um you know, again, it seems obvious and dumb, but check that out. Valid point. Is it? <laughs> Barbara says, thanks for giving up your time to answer these questions. I don't have any questions unless you can give me settings for a darn pick I am engraving, but I am learning a lot. Uh, let us know yeah, what you're engraving on and what Jimmy. you're using, lens, wattage. Give, give us know. some info and maybe we can give you some tips. Where uh, Jimmy just like died. So rip Jimmy. Uh, uh, actually, real quick to I was gonna say to to be oh my god, I'm getting blah. uh yeah. to talk yeah, blah blah blah. Like that video I just saw on like that was literally the video I just saw of you and Kyle going back and forth on Instagram today and I fucking yeah. almost That's a funny one. Go. Don't I you put love that, that on the soundboard? My but, girlfriend l- listened to me. I had my headphones in, I'm over getting like 30 minutes. Yeah, like an idiot. 
made just making it perfect, the timing and the shit. And she's like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> but I love to interrupt you, Kyle, is because if you haven't watched Jimmy's video on how to do uh, canvas photos, it was such a great video. I'm not kidding you. Like Jimmy videos always crack me up. But then I like I clicked on it and I was like, oh, shit, this is really good. Like he nailed that video, man. Like in the, the pictures are sharp. Cause like he, I'm telling you, I was just really proud of him. And like, he's I'm not, he's not even here to get a fucking compliment finally. So like, but, uh, <laughs> just saying, Jimmy. If you, if you, yeah, fucking Jimmy. If you haven't seen it though, go watch it. Um, because the settings are great for canvas. I actually, we just had a guy at our school pass away, uh, Thursday and, or, or sorry. To, yeah. Last Thursday. And, uh, I want to like, I literally sitting there thinking like, that's something I can do. For the school, you know, just well, for the for his room, yeah, because yeah, he's been a little for, memorial thing. He's been in school for thirty nine years, or uh, sorry, been a teacher for thirty nine years. Been there since nineteen ninety five. So super cool guy, and uh, I was just about to say thanks, Jimmy, because that'll be so Barbara. That might be somebody who you could talk to. Yeah, I have a thought for Barbara because Barbara follows <laughs> up. Um, I have a hundred watt JPT Mopa using my two hundred ten lens, trying to engrave on three hundred four stainless steel. If you're trying to just do a photo on steel, a lot of people go for the just like Z mark or they're trying to do like a dark mark just right on the steel. Uh, I don't find that works very well because even if you get a really nice dark mark for your details, all of your little pixels, hopefully you're following the, you know, photo engraving guide on laser everything, because uh, that's what all of this advice I'm about to give pertains to. Uh that doesn't really look so good. Even if you have the perfect setting and you're doing perfectly black pixels, the nature of doing that on a reflective metal means it's always going to look good at one angle and it's always going to look terrible at another. So what I would do yeah. is I would actually go back in the laser everything catalog and find a video called photos on silver. Uh, if you find that episode photos on silver with a fiber laser, we detail a process where we actually ablate the surface of the steel then we white it out. So we're actually going to white pass out the entire steel. And that gives us like a smooth matte white base for which to outline uh, and, and add our detail layer. Uh, so now instead of adding pixels to the reflective steel surface, we're adding our pixels to a nice white background. And you can then, it, it triples your viewing angle. Uh, so you can look at it any which way and it's, it's always going to look good. Some of the process in that video is very outdated. So do not, you know, listen to what I'm talking about, like resolution and, you know, the pixels and stuff like that. For that, just go to the photo guide. But for the actual process of preparing the material, how we get the silhouette to lay our base down and then how we put the white over it and how we put the details on top, like that one, two, three really solves a lot of problems as far as trying to find a good setting for marking on steel. And then you just, anything that does a dark mark on steel, you can use for your detail pass. As long as your resolution is set correctly, you're done. Um, so that would be, that would be my suggestion. I would go find that episode uh, photos on silver with a fiber laser. So it's a good, good process. Um, so I would check that out. Solid. Yep. Uh, everybody's talking about in chat right now, Jimmy's new video on, uh, did you guys get a, a chance to see that one? Jimmy's new upload. No, I haven't That's seen a good one. Yet. Oh, it's solid dude. Go watch it. It's funny. He, I uh, it. he starts, he's like, are you tired of seeing all of these reviews on laser? Everything. <laughs> <laughs> so by uh, the way, he does, he does, it's his photos on canvas episode yeah. which are really good he's been spending a lot of time perfecting that he nailed yeah. them and then there's a picture of two schmucks on it at the end it's definitely yeah. worth checking out yeah but yeah, um to add, to add to that uh what you were talking about a second ago with the white pass mm -hmm. um i made it I, so i made the qr code coin a long time ago that, yeah. yeah um but the thing is it's really really cool looking but the problem is like for someone to scan it i realized uh because this is like the first one i've ever really made on stainless steel I had to kind of like shade it, you know, get it right for the person to scan it. Mm -hmm. um, but then uh, I did a white pass coin and it took care of the problem. So it also gives it that juxtaposition, that contrast you need. Um, if you're going to do something like a QR code too, just a heads up. Because I know a lot of people want QR codes on steel, QR codes on whatever. 
Um, so just a really cool thing to think about. Yeah, that's cool. It looks, like, it looks like a cleaner finish too. The white background it almost makes the the dark pop. You know. Yeah, it makes it more matte looking, like mm-hmm. uh, Alex said, and it just nice. Vanessa says, "I like having a combo 1.5 oh, kilowatt to shit. cut the stainless blanks that she uses, and then mm. Galvo doing grave on them 60 watt JPT." There it is, right yeah. there. So that is a yeah. great example of a machine that's purpose built for something. Synergy. So, yeah, it's a yeah. great example so, of a thirty-five thousand dollar piece of equipment at on a good day. <laughs> but uh, I I think um, they're cheaper now. I just well, swallowed a bug. Kilowatts, thirty-five grand on a on a combo unit. Oh, yeah, like, thirty. Uh, on all 34 eight, five. 34 five. On a, Come on. You can get you can get a three in one one point five kilowatt cutter, I think, for like eighteen. What? Yeah. I mean it's still eighteen thousand dollars. That's still I'm not, I'm not talking like a gantry cutter, I'm talking like a, a handheld. Oh. Oh, oh shit. Yeah, no, a I'm three talking in one. Gant, I'm talking about a gantry laser. What's a three in one? No, uh cleaner, cleaner welder yeah. cutter. Oh, oh, like the one that like, makes you look like a ghostbuster. Yeah. yeah, get that. Get one of those from uh, Calio. I'd love to see you man wield that thing in your basement. Get one I, I, like I am. Co- I am committed. If I get my hands on a three in one, I will build a metal desk for my workshop. If you get a three in one, you will be a Ghostbusters cosplay for Halloween next year. Literally, Michael's going to be in one shot with his like. I'll be the really fat one. Stuff. <laughs> <laughs> what sweat and gears? Is asking um, Gwiki Cloud or X Tool M1 for first time purchase. Kind of an odd question. Yeah, that's it. Um, I, I, if, I the M1 specifically has a like a blade cutter in it. So if you have a use for that, that might be a good option for you. Otherwise, the D1 Pro might be a better option if you're just looking for a laser. That'll be a blue laser. The Gwiki Cloud is going to be a 50 watt CO2 laser, and it's going to be twice as much as the X Tool. So, um, it's uh, kind of how much, how much is the cloud? 2800, 2850, I think. Last yeah, time, so it's, it's, it's almost it's on sale yeah. right now. They're having like a Christmas sale. Um, what products are you trying to make is the big question. Yeah, what are you trying to make? Yeah, the, there are uh, two very different tools that are going to result in two very different use case scenarios yeah can the, M, um, can the m1 have like the different parts put onto it like the different um i never like did nodes. that much research into it because i hate vinyl cutting i get really mm-hmm. frustrated by it so i just don't look at that kind of stuff when i'm like, shopping around but um like it's it's meant to be like a laser and a cutter you know so that you can like cut all the things and um, it's, just, it's, just an odd, it's an odd two things to compare. So I would I would want to know more about what you are planning to do with it, and then maybe we could even broaden your horizons outside of those two options. It's it's an odd two options. I've never had anybody ask me this question before, and we uh, we get asked what kind of laser people should get a lot. Um, but I mean, thank you for pushing us outside right? the box. Yeah, yeah. Uh, John Uftering is saying, what I don't like about the Gwiki is the web-based cloud-only software, unless that's changed. Um, I have I have been told that, yeah, by Gwiki, I think, that it is Lightburn compatible. Yeah, um, it is. So, not that I want to stick up for this. Uh, you know, Andrew F. is saying um, the OMTech Polar is the same as the Cloud 2. They're essentially the same machine. They're all made in the, they're all made in the stupid Glowforge factory. Um that's not a that's not a fact that's a that's a uh, uh, a jab but um you know i will say well, in what the about- product listing it says the Gwik cloud does support light burn yeah now figured. granted we don't have one to try that with but right. it's also in the title of the listing on amazon they're also all <laughs> rf tube machines all of those options yes. they're really nice for marking they're okay at cutting uh so if you plan on doing a lot of cutting maybe spend an extra grand and pick up like like a a a real gantry co2 laser with a glass tube um the the little tiny super nice desktop ones are nice but uh the z depth is leaves a lot to be desired and uh your cutting strength is going to be poor to fair at best so you're gonna have a hard time getting a rotary under there you're gonna be mm-hmm. limited 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely there, there's there's pros and cons. You know, if you're just marking and cutting sheet material, great, you're all set. That that'll do fine. But if you want to do anything outside of that, you're gonna start banging your head into the roof on that pretty quick. Uh, yeah. Either of those options. So um, it's just it's just good to know kind of what what you want to be able to mark going into that. It was a very non helpful answer, but. Our answer, nonetheless, because that's how we tear things apart. Um, also, saw another one. I didn't want to skip over it. Purchased a used OMTEC 50 watt CO2. Recommended upgrades. I know you guys talked about making them better with some time. Uh, replace all the mirrors right away. Replace your lens ones. right away. Uh, I would go as far as Kyle re- probably remembers when my uh, cooling system blew up. Uh, literally just sprung a leak in like eight different places. Get mm, real silicone tubes, real good silicone tubes that fit the fittings and real hose clamps that I guarantee you the entire inside of that system. It doesn't matter if it's a $12,000 Eon or a $2,000 ohm tech. All of those silicone tubes are se- sealed with zip ties. Get if, hose clamps, put hose clamps on you, them. If you go to Alex's episode where he does do uh, the the maintenance where he replaces stuff, the tube mm-hmm. specifically, mm-hmm. I think it was that episode. He links to um, some really nice plastic uh, hose um, hose clamps. I recommend that, especially when you're near the tube. The tube, because one of the reasons why we suggest or everyone suggests distilled water in a, in your cooling system is because of the conductivity of the water. Right. You don't want to add conductivity by adding metal right next to the tube and of the water or yeah. the tube outlet. Not so, good. yeah, I mean, granted it's insulated through the silicone, but my, you don't yeah. want to invite that as a problem. My ohm tech actually has the metal ones on mm-hmm. the, on the tube itself because the plastic, the tube, the glass, Remember, we were talking about imperfections in glass. The glass is thicker than the normal tube fittings for that size. So I couldn't close the plastic ones around. Mm, you definitely don't want to force caps. those. So I, yeah. I put the mm-hmm. stupid metal hose clamp on it. And it's been fine, uh, to be fair. But it's yeah. a valid point, Kyle. Very important valid point. So yeah. lenses, mirrors, mileage, right, right away. Um, hoses and clamps are all just rip them all out and throw them away immediately. They're all super inexpensive to replace and will greatly increase the performance of your machine. Clean the damn thing like nobody's business. Degrease the rails and regrease them with real light uh, white lithium grease. Just re- regrease those wet rails right away. Don't use anything that was left on there by the previous owner. Degrease the whole entire thing. Regrease the rails yourself. And... Um, if all of that is said and done, you, you want to go hard. There it is. Yep. The Lucas white lithium grease. Matt has it right there. Um, if all of that is said and done and you still want to make the thing better, uh, freak, throw the tube out, man. Replace the tube. You can get a new tube for three, 400 bucks. Start fresh. Brand new tube. Watt, you might even be able to get cheaper. Yeah, um, it, yeah. True. True. The last thing I can think of would be beam combiner if it doesn't already have one. If it doesn't already have one, you can put a beam combiner in. It's a real big pain in the ass, but totally worth it. I have a beam combiner on every gantry machine that I have because it's just, it, it makes a big it difference. It makes life better. Yeah, it makes yeah. life better. It makes life better. It's easy to install. Um, it's a little e- harder to dial in. But once you get it dialed in, they really don't require much adjustment. You'll just have to redo your mirror alignment and you'll be good. Um, so yeah. those th- that is, I think, a very strong list. By the way, I was just going to show this uh, tube of lithium grease because when I looked on Amazon, um, you couldn't find, like, they only had, like, you had to buy a three pack and it was like 25 bucks or something crazy. Mm-hmm. Went to Lowe's, they had it for seven bucks. Mm-hmm. Big ass, seven bucks, big ass yep. tube. That's the same so brand I used to. Lucas. Yeah, well, that, you, uh, I, the, yeah. Yep. You can also yep. usually get it at, like, your local auto parts store, too. Yeah. So I was just going to say, it's, like, it's used on cars as well. Don't forget about your local places because we always online, online, online. So just heads up. Joel says, any help with getting a pretty black mark on anodized aluminum business cards? I've got a 50 watt JPT. Um, <clears throat> my quick answer is it's going to be difficult because black requires heat. And those cards like to warp like crazy when you start dumping heat into them. And with they the 50 watt JPT, you don't have, moving around. 
Yeah. You don't have uh, uh, cupels to adjust. So I, you know, black, I, I usually just tell people, no, you can't get like a native black out of aluminum with a standard fiber laser. You really need a MOPA to pull that off well. Um, yeah. You know, I, I'm sure that somebody out there has some like crazy, they've done it once on like a engine. You got to put hairspray on it. You can put hairspray yeah. on it. Hairspray, yeah. Please don't put hairspray on anything you're gonna laser. Um, yeah, that's the... <laughs> uh, so it's gonna so take a lot of time to. So yeah, we do it's have just... an episode. It's called Black on Aluminum with Fiber Laser or whatever. I know I'm referencing a lot of old episodes today, but uh, we really use, are. we use Brilliance Laser Inks with uh with a fiber laser, not even a CO two. We do it with a fiber laser. We get a nice black on aluminum. Probably what I would do. Uh, it's not a deep mark, but it's black. Uh, so that might be something, you know, drop 30 bucks on a can and experiment with that. And you, uh, you know, if you can nail the settings for that, which is a little difficult, use a big lens it can be much easier on a, a bigger lens. But if you can nail the settings for that stuff, it'll save you, you know, however much you would have spent on a MOPA upgrade for your laser to get similar results. So that would be my top suggestion for you. Let me see here. Where'd this go? I just wanted to show you this one that this guy brought up here. Um, yeah, here it is. Knife modders. Alex, we spoke before on Discord. You helped me resolve an issue with EasyCAD with my shapes not being correct. It ended up being a problem with red light speed. Mm -hmm. Recently switched to light burn, having similar issues, which have not resolved with adjusting speed. Interesting. Uh, is that it would be doing it when you're also marking? I think that's a forum post or a Facebook yeah. group post. Or yeah. Discord post. So that can be a lot of things. Um, I would say if you're. It's going to take some diagnosis. Yeah. Uh, do, do a forum post in one of the platforms and we'll marking is fine. Just the red light. Yeah, that's more I'm gonna wanna, like, kind of I'm gonna wanna like to sink my teeth into your settings and yeah, like upload a video so we can like see it happen. And I'm sure we'll be able to get to the bottom of it, but I don't think I'm gonna be able to hunt that down while we're live. Um yeah. which is a bummer. I'm sorry, but yeah, we, plus, we will we will follow up with that for sure. You can check out the new forum. Did you guys know we have a new forum? It's over at lasereverything.net slash forum. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool if you like the old school vibes. Uh, and I just wanted something under our domain name that we controlled in case I woke up tomorrow when we were deplatformed everywhere on the planet. We would still have somewhere to meet up with you guys. So go check that yeah. out if you haven't. Um, did, Chad, did you, you ask? Oh, go ahead. Yep. I was going to say he he did respond and said um, he asked in Discord but didn't get a response. Did you do a forum post or did you ask in a chat? Because in, in a, a chat, chat, it's going to get buried. Right. Um, thanks all for the help with my saga. Keep up the great work as it is easy to see all the people that appreciate it. Uh, no problem, man. We're here to help. And uh, yeah, if you anywhere, that goes for anywhere. That goes for Facebook. That goes for the LMA. That goes for, uh, you know, the the Discord. If you guys ask questions, uh, people love to ask questions in chat. But the people that need to see your question in chat don't see it because there are too many messages and they get buried. Kyle and I, frankly, we don't even really read the chats all that often unless we're there and there's like an active conversation going on. We'll participate in it. But when we're looking through support stuff to try to help people, uh, we're looking at the posts. So whether, again, you're on Discord, we have a forum system on Discord, whether you're on the Facebook group or you are on the LMA, please use whatever forum functionality is built into that platform so that we can, like there's a permanent post somewhere that we can like refer back to and see that it's been unanswered that's really important for getting your questions answered uh because kyle and i have you know 80 million questions we need to answer and if there's no way to track what we've what we've answered and what we have and it becomes yeah. very difficult very quickly so um definitely do that we'll keep an eye out for it for yeah. sure um yeah if if it's been a couple of days put a post in your form and bump it yep just say, hey, I'm still having this issue. Can somebody take a look, please? Randy H. says, good evening, all. Just made it home from vacation to get my CO2 delivery. Whoop, whoop. Uh, let's let the games begin. Absolutely. Make sure you get a picture of yourself on top of the crate, like posing. You, know? yeah, you have to. Like yeah, the Pamela, like one of your French girls post? 
Yes. I really liked the. Did you guys see my uh, my crate thumbnail for the Ranger? Mm-mm. But I'll I saw it, but I don't recall it. If you go go to the channel, I'm on I'm on the crate. I'm like, oh no, that's a good one. <laughs> oh no, um, Gary's asking, can you preheat the cards to keep them from warping? I don't know. That's an interesting mm. question. Uh, no, certainly not. just the warp. Kyle's it's like, the amount of heat going into a finite area. Mm. It it warps because of the uneven heating. The starting temperature doesn't matter. It's yeah, it'll just warp quicker. Pointed heat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah. It, the it's it's think of it like stretching versus pulling. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The the hotter area will stretch, but it will begin to pull at the areas that don't have as much heat in it, and it'll start to go all funny on you. Yeah. 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 I learned that the hard way already. So. <laughs> By the way, just to go back to this, I want to make wood engravings because we had asked him what he wanted to do. A little acrylic and slate. Heard CO2 is better. That's why I was considering the Glicky Cloud. But what about the Ranger behind you? Are they similarly priced? Uh, the Ranger is going to be a little bit more expensive, uh, but it's a great option for a uh, you know mid-sized CO2, mid-sized entry CO2. And it has uh, no, like, it's definitely light burn, ready to rock and roll. Oh, yeah, dude, ready to rock and roll, motorized Z. Uh, like, all the components the, on it, all in the it frills. are great. It's yeah, stellar, stellar little unit. They are currently four thousand three hundred and thirty dollars. You get a twenty-four by fifteen inch workspace. Mine comes equipped with a seventy watt tube and an amazing Trosen controller, which is like my new favorite thing in the world. Freaking Trosen controller is sick. I can't wait to try it, man. It's so sick, dude. It, it makes the Ruido look like freaking like chiseling caveman tools. It's unreal. Uh, so oh. very, very awesome. Very awesome. Uh, so definitely, you can definitely check that out. Um, I don't think we have a link to that in the buying guide. I will try to grab a link for that really quick. Well, you're doing that. Yep. Uh, Joel says he can adjust his Q pulse. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, you said you had a 50 watt JPT. Yes. That is not a, that is not a true Mopa source. So Should you not be adjusting do not have Q pulse on that. unlocked Q pulse. Yeah. So if you are sending adjustments to that in software, it's not doing anything on okay. the source. Yep. Um, you're, it's like throwing a hot dog down a, a driveway or something. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, I'm, I'm not, I'm not trying to be funny, but it, it, it's, it's not. It's, you just made me almost spit an entire fucking mouthful of water across <laughs> my, like every, all the electronics. Uh, that would have been hilarious and totally worth it. Um, but yeah, if you have a 50 watt GPT that's an LP source, you're not going to have Q pulse control. Yeah. Um, you if need... the option is there, by the way, you might actually have the wrong source in your laser settings because that happened yeah. when I first got in, mine. Both EasyCAD and Lightburn have the option to enable it, and neither will stop you from enabling it, even if your source does not do that. Support it. Yeah. yeah. So, um, probably want to turn that off. Uh, Mike C says, I think my question got buried in this chat. Uh, very <laughs> likely, Mike. Um, but if you repost it again, we can take a look at it. Uh, Chris Wilson saying a JPT M7 is not a MOPA. It is, uh, but not all JPTs, and not all JPTs are M7s. Uh, and if the if you do have a 50 watt, the 50 watt variants do not come in an M7 format. Yeah. They only come in or, the LP format. So yeah. there um, there are other MOPA series prior to the M7, the M6 the m1 the m whatever but uh the the point is is they did not come in a, a mopa variant at 50 watts. at 50 watts i found mike c's question Woo! hey nice job my laser came with a lens listed as 100 millimeters the imported core file yep all right so this question we get it all the time um when you get a lens and you see the field size printed on the lens that field size is an approximation it's a rating for the lens it's rated for use at 100 by 100 millimeters when you do the core file the core file is showing you the true field size of the lens like it's absolute limits it's not rated to be used at that size but that's the size that you could theoretically push the beam out to in some directions essentially the core file is revealing the true stat on the field size of the lens you still want to stick to what it's rated for they give them ratings for a reason. So let the core file do its thing. Let it exist at 121 by 123 or whatever it returns and use it as a 110. Keep things within 
that 110 square. Uh, it's easy on EasyCAD because the field size settings and the workspace settings are different. So if you set your field size to the core file and it does 121 by 123, that's fine. Then you go into your workspace settings, you can set it to 100 by 100. It'll artificially limit your workspace to 100 by 100 and you can just go about your business. In Lightburn, it's one setting. So you are kind of stuck with how the core file is correcting it. And you just need to remember when you're on that lens that you should be maxing out at 100. Hopefully someday they will add a feature to just artificially limit your your, <coughs> your workspace uh, yeah. in software. Cho choose to make it smaller if you that want. That would be very nice reason. for this specific reason uh, alone uh, would be ideal. But that's kind of the situation. So no, nothing is wrong. Uh, and you are you are totally good i'm sure your core file is fine as long as everything looks right your squares are square things are the right size uh it's otherwise then it's probably fine robert hamilton fucking got me uh, good. that's great did, oh, man. Did, did you get uh, jack's note from above yeah his goal from now the, on is to make you spit water all over your by nose. the way one thing about jack is his comments if you ever like i always go back through and look at comments on videos and alex already saw the comment before me but literally it said not the first time he's ever said that's on camera. And no. it's like, and it's got a timestamp. Mm -hmm. It's me going, it's Alex being like, where's my pecker? I know it's around here somewhere. And then I was like, yeah, Alex, show us your pecker. And I'm just like, oh shit. Yeah. So Jack, you, you're, you're on point, buddy. Appreciate the comments. <laughs> um, nice. Elo asks, does Lightburn have plans for a core file style calibration? Um, when we were beta testing, Lightburn for Galva way back before it was even announced. I had a list of like must haves before launch. And one of them was native lens corrections. And I haven't seen any progress on that. Uh, I haven't heard about any priority for that project. Uh, super disappointing. I'd love to see it. I really hope that they decide to spend some man hours on that sooner than later because essentially right now you can only do core file lens corrections if you're a windows user which is a huge bummer even though lightburn also supports mac os and linux uh it's a yeah. it's a really big big hole in a galvo you know controller software so um we can hope for that but for for now you're stuck using easycad the the good news is you can, I mean, like borrow a hundred dollar laptop from a friend. Like it can be the worst computer in the world just to hook it up, run the core file, get it, put it on a flash drive. And then you never have to touch it again. You know, um, yeah. just, just produce that once and, and you've got it. Uh, but unfortunately that's the best suggestion I have right now, other than doing manual lens corrections, which I personally don't feel is a viable option for most people. Um, I have a little bit of a rant about that. Fucking knock yourself out, dude. Um, similarly, I was helping somebody on the LMA who had a Mac. Uh, core file wasn't an option. They don't. They didn't know anybody who ran a Windows machine, and they weren't willing to go out and buy or borrow a unit from somewhere else uh, for you know maybe due to access or availability. So at the end of the day, their option was to run a manual you know, correction. And you can easily dump hours into doing that if you want to actually fine tune it versus just having a utility that will take you five to 10 minutes to just run, you measure, you input it, and then you save it and validate that it actually worked. Um, so I implore you, if you do have an option, just just switch the driver and use core file. I, I know that's not an option if you have a Mac, but if you have the option. Yeah. And uh, right over. Elo saying, uh, I can easily do that. I do. I have to do it for each lens. Yes. Every lens requires a separate uh, correction file because you're correcting for the specific nu nuances and, and uh, you know, it, it, imperfections in each yeah. lens. So the, that is what we're correcting for. So yes, you'll want to do that for every lens. Every piece of glass, like Alex said before about the tubes, it, it very much applies to the lenses and even like glasses, right? So, um, yeah, you're uh, you're going to be looking at correcting per lens, even if you had two two 
what seemed to be identical 110 lenses that came off the same production line back to back, they're going to have completely different core files to some yeah. degree, especially if you're looking for like accuracy. Yeah. Um, because you might have like a skew in one direction on one lens, whereas on the other one, it's, it's perfectly centered. Um, and you're just kind of bringing in the edges a little bit. So, yeah. Um, I don't think we've ever gone this far over and retained so many viewers uh, for an episode of the podcast, but I am going to cut it uh, here because we are hitting an hour 20. Whoa, that went fast. Um, it was on Kyle's so, rant. Yeah, it's just that rant uh, actually went on for like 30 minutes and we were all just kind of like... <laughs> um, 18 seconds. <laughs> Like Guys. Alex, Alex got to the end of his Oreo pack. I know. No, I still have a few left. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight Oreos left. You know, this family I pack haven't double stuffed. I haven't had an Oreo since the night we we engraved those. <laughs> they hurt my teeth. They hurt my teeth. <laughs> they just up? instantly make me feel sick to my stomach now. Yeah. I wonder um, why. I, I, I have a long know. dog. You know, couldn't tell you. <laughs> uh, if you guys. Got value out of this episode. Don't forget to smash the like button. Let everybody else know the content is good. Uh, don't ever forget that old adage. Time flies when you're tossing hot dogs down the driveway, guys. Keep that one close to close to heart. <laughs> it's, you, it's an oldie but a goldie. It's an, it's an oldie but a goldie. <laughs> and and uh, <laughs> shit, guys, I don't even know. Kyle and I are twinsies. Or, uh, Matt and I are twinsies today. Dude, Look this shirt, I got so many compliments on this shirt. It's because it's dope. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I I went to go pick up my dinner last night wearing this hoodie, and the person at the bar I was picking up the hoodie or wow well, my food from, they were like, "Oh, that's a really nice hoodie. What do you do for a living? Is that your job?" And I go, "Yeah, we engrave stuff. We and laser goes, everything. Oh, like like what?" And I'm like, "Everything." <laughs> yeah. That's um, yeah. Somebody told me I, I had a misspelling on this. Is like snack mm, no. No, that's right. how you spell it, friend. <laughs> Welcome to the internet. Um, Gary's asking, you guys planning on being on Thursday, same bat time, same bat channel? No. Uh, so I made this announcement at the beginning of the episode. You probably weren't here, Gary, but while I have everybody here, I will say it again. Last Thursday's episode was our last Thursday episode for the foreseeable future so that Kyle and I can have more time working on our core content and the inf informative and educational stuff that made the channel so popular to begin with. We, we kind of want to spend more time doing that. So we're going to be doing Tuesdays for the foreseeable future. Kyle will still be doing his live streams every now and then because they don't require editing, probably weekly or, or semi-weekly, uh, something along those lines. So there will still be live content going up. Kyle will certainly have more time for that when we're not doing a second episode every week and if you want to hear us talk more go listen to emergency stop uh which is still not getting a ton of downloads but that's okay because we still have fun making it you find it over at emergencystop.net same people that you're used to listening to and hanging out with every week but much more vulgar and uh not related to work at all so <laughs> if you just if you just miss hearing our voices uh that would it's be the a, place to go i tried to count the amount of curse words in a one minute segment and i made it like 38 oh yeah it's our it's our one to two hours a week that we're not working or that we're not working. working. Yeah. Um, so there's that. So if you want to just spend more time with us, emergencystop.net. Um, but I think that's all we've got for this one. We will be back with a fresh new can of episode for you next Tuesday at nine o'clock PM EST right here on laser everything. Thank you guys so much for watching support the channel over at the LMA. Somebody go watch Lasered. It's got like 800 views. Uh, I love you all. Matt, Voice, Kyle, thanks for hanging out with me. Uh, I hope Jimmy's life alert is working. We need to <laughs> check on him. I don't know where he went. That's all I've got, guys. Thank you so much. We will see you in the next one. Happy Hanukkah. Kwan.